Hey guys, I'm back again. It's still the 11th. In the morning, my battery was getting ready to crap out. Uh, I got the setting on here as loud as it'll go, and I don't have it in the case on the camera, so it. I heard a little beep and looked at it, and sure enough, it was it was uh, flashing with an empty battery. So I shut it off before it got down. These Wasabi batteries, they don't hold up very long. But uh, I was talking to my my one buddy yesterday. And I was telling him about something something that happened, and he said, "Oh, you ought to you ought to put that on your vlog." So this will be this will be story time. And so I got a couple a couple stories, just things that I remembered from my past that I thought were funny. And maybe you guys will like them. If you do, let me know. If not, let me know that too. But uh, one of the, one of the stories made me think of it. I was walking over here, and they got this real mean mean dog. But so many times I went by, it didn't have any water, so I was bringing up a water and uh, putting it in the bowl even though it was barking at me like it wanted to kill me as soon as that water would hit the bowl it would you know it would go after it just just drink 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 I'd be walking away and it was still drinking drinking and barking <laughs> but uh, I went by here yesterday and dog dog's not there no more and I asked the lady what happened she said died so and it was a young dog wasn't that old of a dog but uh, I had I had a coon hound once and she was she was really something she was uh she wasn't a uh cold tracking dog where you know she'd run a track for an hour or two she she'd smell them and have them treed within 15 20 minutes and uh she she sometime one time i heard her she sounded like she was far off and i'm going and i seen some eyes with my mind light and and i walked she was she was way up in the tree she was a good 12 feet up in a tree and then she she fell, fell out and hit her face on a root that was sticking up out and busted some teeth out and still wouldn't stop barking at that coon you know she's just crazy for getting getting coon but but uh, had her bought her when she was about 10 she was such a she was a walker uh, and she was uh, had been bred so much because she was such a good dog you know you get a dog like that you breed them and you get some you get some good pups grand night champions and such well she she had like a, a tumor on her on her bag and it was growing and it got to the point where if we took her out coon hunting she would rip that bag open and we'd have to put some balm on there i actually had made a sling for her but she was getting caught up and all that finally took her took her up to the vet we had a vet that we knew and uh he said look i i could remove that but you know it's just going to be expensive and he always gave us good deals uh, but you know it was still like 800 bucks back in those days 800 bucks i didn't <laughs> 800 bucks heck if i had 800 bucks i'd have bought a different car you know that's just how it was in them days and uh so my pap said well why don't why don't we do it uh, well, okay well, let's we'll give her a whirl and he had some uh he had some pills he had in his medicine chest and he says uh wrap that in some bologna and give it to her and that should that should knock her out knock her out long enough okay so that's what we did we cleaned her up uh, shaved her belly and stuff and we got in there we cut it open it was a big yellow big yellow mass and he was like oh that's good because he he had known this uh veterinarian uh that we would go to for most of his life it was the old guy and uh well the dang thing had like tentacles that went up from the bag in through in through under the ribs and was like by the heart and <laughs> i mean it was all over and we used a soldering gun with one of the plastic cutter edges on it and burned off what we could and i'll never forget the smell of that one uh, that was really a nasty smell but we got off as much as we could and uh anywhere that started bleeding we just burned it with the soldering gun and then uh some of that bag that was hanging down so bad we just took basically a pair of scissors and just cut a lot of it off and then sewed her back up uh you know we, we sewed her up made her a victorian collar out of uh some plastic we had laying around and then kept her kept her in the house i, I didn't let her put her outside because it was kind of cool weather it's like i think october or november so it was getting pretty cool and I'll tell you what, that that evening when she, you know, after she come to, she, she heard the other dogs going and she wanted to go. <laughs> she wanted to go out. But we kept her in there until her uh, 
her stitches healed up and you know that dog lived another four years after that and she, she did well she she did really good so that's my one my one uh, dog story I do feel bad about this one up here that died I know he was a nasty nasty son of a gun barked at me all the time I'm sure if he got loose it could go 50 50 either he'd uh, got scared because <laughs> it was new to him and he got off his chain or he'd have bit us something something wouldn't have been good either way but but uh i still don't think you should not water him i mean you know if, if you don't like a dog or something get rid of him don't don't not water him don't don't not feed him but uh that's how it is this is how it goes here my other funny story was uh, I got some chewing tobacco now. Uh, thanks, Tropical Tim and Tropical Tim's daughter. Uh, Ray brought some chew back for me. The sweet stuff, I call it. And uh, then a big bag his daughter sent me, a Tennessee chew. That's that's pretty good. So I, I do like my chewing tobacco. been chewing since I was young. Can't. It's hard to get here. It's pretty expensive here. There's a place called Fuma that sells it, but it's for you can only get uh, Red Man, which is the super sweet stuff. I like mail pouch myself, but uh, it's like 16. Back when I bought it last, it was $16 a bag. I bought myself one for Christmas, just you know, I splurged. I thought that was a lot of money, but uh, I got my buddy sending me some. He's gonna send me a couple cases here pretty soon, but uh. I used to have a cup, a spit cup, and I, so I wouldn't get spit all over my shirt or anything. I'd put the cup up like this when I had the sweet stuff, because that's you spit a lot. With the mail pouch, I don't spit that much, but when I moved to California, it was hard to find mail pouch. You know, it would be, you just couldn't find it. All, all you could find was beech nut, beech nut or red man. Or they had this uh, uh, gold bag of stuff that was real sweet, too. I can't remember the name of it. Levi Garrett. I, I didn't think much of that one. But but that stuff get juicy in the morning. I'd have a chew. And I started riding with a guy. He lived in California his whole life. Never was a chewer. Didn't, didn't smoke. He was a, like a health nut. He was in good shape, this guy. Good worker, too. I mean, holy cow. Well, we were working a job pretty far away. He lived close by me. And... And uh, he had this big uh, Ford excursion, big motor. I mean, it was raised way up in the air. I mean, you could almost walk under this thing. And it, it would just uh, kill him in gas. So I said, well, ride with me. You're, you know, just get over to my house in the morning. You can park your truck right over there. He was only a mile or two away. And then we'll ride in together. But I said, there's no, no going home. If you decide you got to go home early or something for anything, I ain't riding you. I'm not leaving. And he's like, cool. So we're riding, and after about a week of riding together, he says, "Man, what do you, what do you do with that chew? What, what do you what do you do with it? You know, what does it do for you?" I said, "I don't know. I've been chewing since I was a kid, and and uh, I just like it. You know, like some people like smokes, and some people like beer. I I like chew. You know, it's like coffee. I like coffee. And I like chew in the morning." So he's sitting there looking, and and fi finally he he sees me holding it up and. I'm spitting in it, but I don't think he realized that. Because we used to play this uh, Spanish uh, CD in there in the morning, too, to teach how to speak Spanish. He wanted to learn how to speak Spanish. And I had a, I had a CD player. And uh, he picks it up. I'm looking at him thinking, what the heck's he, what's heck, maybe he's got to spit or something. And he took a big drink of it. <laughs> He took, a group. <laughs> he took a drink, and he goes, "Oh, this stuff!" He goes, "This stuff is horrible." <laughs> but he put it back in the holder, and I never did tell him. <laughs> I never did say a word. But I thought that was kind of funny. He took a big, big swig of spit, chew spit. That's got to be nasty. But that was just one of the funny things in the history history of life that. I thought it was kind of amusing. I was telling my buddy that the other day. He's, oh, why don't you, why don't you tell it on your vlog? I, I never thought of that kind of stuff. But uh, it's pretty good. But we're having a heck of a Sunday morning. You can see how this grass is really grown here. It gets so high you can't hardly see. Still wouldn't mind having a goat. Just take a goat out. It could eat a lot of this stuff down. Even one would do it. I had a buddy Joe years ago that I had some some ground where I wanted to put my dogs and it was all jaggers and all this stuff and and uh, he gave me give me a couple goats told me told me I could keep them too and uh, we put them I put them on a about a 10-foot chain with old car axle beat that into the ground 
and every day they'd make a big circle they'd clean it right down to the dirt and it was it was a matter of a week or so they had me a big area for the dogs at that time I, I think I had about 15 15 hunting dogs didn't sleep much in them days I don't sleep I don't sleep that much I don't know why it is but uh, if I go to bed it if I fall asleep at let's say eight or nine I'm up by two you know I just I just only sleep so much and then I'm done that's enough beer can there but uh, you know they're taking this sand out of here this thing they're they're really moving along they're really moving along on this there's cocoa up already but look at that they got the concrete in there and that looks like that lower one is the is the bathroom area they should raise those doors up for the water but they're they're moving right along they got their their forms in ready to pour their stanchions I guess you call them they'll pour that in but these guys they don't mess around they're they're moving right along seemed like it took our house forever but uh, this one I it seems like they're just going real quickly and the other ones so the longest the longest thing it seems to take is for them to dig the holes they do everything by hand here uh, somebody asked about the block that's all offloaded by hand off the trucks the sand they they mix all the concrete themselves uh, there's you know there's no uh, machinery there's no backhoe nothing like that they do everything by hand and if you've seen these shovels you know these shovels uh, in the states would have been thrown out a long time ago but uh, they just keep right on using them and digging the best they can they get so much money per hole it's extra from their pay so they'll these guys will work a full day and then in the evening they'll dig or get up early in the morning before work and they'll dig and when they finish their hole they get uh, uh, they get their money so but I'm gonna go ahead and let you go again and this is Rick Shaw out